Hi, this is Andy from Orbit Media, and I want to explain how influencer marketing works together with content and search engine optimization. Now, we all know that this is a big trend. Influencer marketing isn't going anywhere. It's big and it's getting bigger. Just put influencer marketing into Google Trends and you will see a line going straight up. There's a lot of people who are thinking about this and working on this and adding this to your skill set can do wonders for your content and your search rankings. We did some research and found that bloggers who use influencer marketing are more likely to report strong results from their content than bloggers who use any other promotion channel. I'm going to define influencer marketing as simply connecting with people who have already built that audience that you want to reach. And I'm really talking about collaboration. I'm not talking about paid influencer marketing. I know that's a big thing. I'm talking about content collaboration as in organic influencer marketing. Now, a lot of people, when they think about influencer marketing, they think about social media. They think about Instagram. They think about celebrities and trying to get those people to share your stuff. I'm going to make the case that that is not the best way to collaborate with influencers and not really the angle we should be looking for. Now, I love to have a big famous account share my content. I'll give you an example. This is a screenshot of a tweet where the official Google Analytics Twitter account shared an article that I wrote. I was thrilled. I still am thrilled. It's very exciting. It's an honor. I cried a little bit. I called my mom. I printed it out. Now, this is exactly the kind of thing that people are often trying to do when they do influencer marketing. But what do you think the real impact of this was? I can measure the traffic from Twitter that day to that post, and it's not a lot of visitors. About 160 visitors total from that channel that day to that content. So maybe there's another way to look at this. Maybe social media is not the ideal outcome, uh, the real benefit of doing influencer marketing. Maybe SEO actually would have uh, much bigger, more durable benefits than just social media shares. So how do we collaborate with influencers to benefit our SEO and our search rankings? We want a lead. Ultimately, that's what we're looking for is a lead. Now, I'm going to back it all the way up. If you want a lead, you need two things. You need a qualified visitor and you need to convert them. Traffic and a conversion rate equals leads. Now, traffic in content marketing comes from three classic promotional channels, search, social, and email. But it's really the search rankings that matter because those are the visitors that have stronger intent. They've got their fingers on their keyboard. They're looking for something. They need help that day. So we know from analytics and from research that it's really search that brings the visitors who are more likely to take action, more likely to convert and become a lead. So we're going to focus on search, which means we need to focus on rankings. Now, there are two main search ranking factors links and content, as in authority and relevance. So now we get to one of the most important questions in all of digital. Why do people link to things? It's actually quite simple. There's two things you need to win a link. You need a relationship with people who create content because they make links, and you need to have content that is worthy of being linked to. Now we know from other research from Steve Rayson at BuzzSumo, who analyzed a million articles to figure out what kind of content attracts links and shares. And what he discovered is most content nobody links to. In fact, 75% of the million articles he looked at had zero links to them. But there's one type of content that consistently wins more links than any other, and that is original research. So we're going to focus on that as the most link-worthy type of content. The next thing we need is relationships with people who create content. Now, who are those people? This is called the 1% rule. 1% of people make the internet, 99% of people just consume it. So when we are online and we are networking and building relationships, we want to pay attention to that tiny percentage of people who actually create content. Content creators create links, links pass authority, authority is ranking potential, and that's what we need in the long run to rank for that really valuable phrase. So there's five types of people who create content. Obviously, the big one is the bloggers and blog editors. They're not the only ones. Also, we could say journalists, researchers, podcasters, event producers. There's lots of different people who make links, but we're going to focus on bloggers at first here. And this is going to sound familiar to anybody who's been involved in PR. This is simply blogger relations. Organic influencer marketing and collaboration is basically modern day digital PR. So 
If we want to find these people first, there's lots of tools for this. This is easier than ever to find people to collaborate with if you don't already know who they are. Just put your topic into like a Twitter search tool such as Follower Wonk and add a word that indicates that they're a content creator such as blogger or editor. And you're going to find tons of people on basically any topic who create content and you might be able to collaborate with. Buzzsumo also happens to be a great tool for this. Buzzsumo has an influencer search tool where you can just check a box for bloggers and journalists and put in your topic and you're going to find tons of people who are all content creators and relevant for that topic. These are people you could build relationships with and collaborate with. Bottom line, social media is the world's greatest phone book. You can just imagine some super specific person and find them in seconds and begin to start a conversation. Now there are basically five ways, five main ways to collaborate. The first one is simply mentioning someone as you make something and then when it goes live you let them know it's live. Not really recommended. You're not really networking. You're not really collaborating. That content is something where you just made it and told them later. Uh, they're not really invested in the piece. So far better is to reach out to someone while you're making the content and ask them for a contributor quote. Hey, I'm making this thing. Would you like to be involved? Another way is to do that with lots of people. Now you've got an expert roundup. Guest blogging is, of course, a format for collaborative content where you are reaching out to editors and writing for those other websites. And then when you meet like the hardcore expert on a topic, it's a good thing to, re to ask them if they'd like to be interviewed. And then you can build a good relationship that way. Virtually everybody wants to be interviewed. Very few people will decline to give you a contributor quote. People wake up in the morning hoping to get a PR hit, which is what you're doing when you reach out and offer to collaborate with them. So let's break down the contributor quote. This is one of my favorite content marketing tricks. Uh, it, it makes your content better. It's going to help you get social media traffic, which isn't our main goal. But when we collaborate with those content creators, we've got a chance to later appear in their content, hopefully. It works like this. I'm writing an article about social media profile pictures. I know Mark Schaefer is interested in this topic, so I reach out to him while I'm writing it, and I say, hey Mark, would you like to contribute a quote to this article? He responds with a, a quote that I can include in the article. And says, no problem, how does this sound? This is perfect, thanks, I'll let you know when it's live. Now, the actual piece, I'll show you an example. I included a little bit of research in this. This is basically social media profile picture tips. And as you scroll down, you can see I've got a little tip in here for background and color and different things. I'm including some of other people's research. I've got some research of my own. And as you scroll down, you'll see I've got that quote from Mark Schaefer. A journalist would never write an article without a source. Why would the content marketer write an article without a contributor quote? Two bloggers, for example, blogger A, blogger B. Blogger B reaches out to their network, socializes the topic. What do you think of this headline? Get some input from their community. As they write, they include people in the content. Those people then, when the article goes live, are sort of invested in the piece. They're much more likely to share. Which of these two bloggers gets greater social traction? Not that social media traffic is our goal in this case, but we need to build our content for promotion. Everyone knows that content optimized for search includes keywords. Keywords in the title, the header, the subheads, using related phrases. But what not everyone seems to realize is that content optimized for social media includes people. You should have people in your content, faces and names. Uh, it should be a little party in your post, right, where people are engaged with it already, that they're invested in the content. That is stuff ready for promotion in both channels. The bottom line is we're answering the question, how many people are waiting for this article to go live? That number should be greater than zero. Uh, if, if we have people invested in it, an ally in creating content is an ally in promoting that content. Guest blogging and PR is another direct way to get SEO benefits from collaboration. There's two main search ranking factors, as we said, authority and relevance. Authority as in links and relevance as in you know, content and keywords. Guest blogging directly leads to links to your content. Blogger A writes two articles. Blogger B writes two articles and pitches one to an editor. They publish it. That's that yellow box there. That's going to link back to their content in the author bio, if not in the editorial. And then collaborative way, they're inviting guest bloggers onto their platform. So that other blogger there is contributing an article. So blogger B has more content associated with their brand. Round two, 
further, more links, more friends, more, <laughs> more traction, more content. And round four, blogger A, nice blog, buddy. But blogger B is building those relationships, those links, those social and search benefits, those collaborations, that influencer marketing powered content strategy. Now, BuzzSumo, again, is a tool for this because as you research people, it doesn't just show you the size of their following. It shows you the domain authority of the site that they write for. The domain authority is a measure on the scale of 1 to 100, the benefit of a link from that site to yours. Without doing a deep dive into SEO, uh, paying attention to who writes, but also what is the authority of the sites they write for, um, is uh, one of the most important ways to measure the, uh, the possible influencer marketing uh, search optimization outcomes from that collaboration. Now, BuzzSumo is a paid tool, but you can do that research for free using Mozbar, which is a Chrome extension. Install Mozbar on Chrome and go search for your topic. Go search for blogs to write for. Put in the topic plus write for us in quotes, and you're going to see all kinds of blogs who are accepting guest posts on that topic. And when Mozbar is turned on, it's going to overlay right onto search results the authority of that website, as in the value of a link from that site to you. To this day, one in three of my articles is a guest post. I don't know anybody who has a brand so big that they should stop writing for other sites. Why would we ever stop doing PR? 11 years in content marketing, I'm still doing lots of guest posting. It's the most fun I've ever had in digital. I get to work with expert editors who can make me a better writer. I get to reach a larger audience. And there's the search and social benefits. So it's useful to put out into the world as you interact with people online that you are open to these kinds of collaborations. So one of the ways to uh, remind people that you're open to writing for their site or contributing a guest post to them or being interviewed in their content, it's helpful to put that little sentence out that says that you would love to collaborate yourself. I've done this a thousand times. I say this sentence so often that I actually have a text expander installed on Chrome. So when I hit the same button three times, it automatically expands into this line of text. If you'd ever like to collaborate on anything at all, don't hesitate to reach out. So I love social media marketing, but what a lot of people do in social media is just try to build a network on one platform. What I'm suggesting here is to use social media for research and to start conversations and for networking. Rather than build a big network on one platform, we want to connect with those key people on many platforms because it's those relationships that will lead to the long-term SEO benefits. What we're doing here is basically solving the problem of bad SEO. You don't need to send cold email. You don't need to send that horrible form submission spam, that cold email that just says, link to me now, or pay me for these links, or I write good article for you. I get these emails all the time. Take my infographic and link to me. You have a broken link, link to me. These are five examples of bad email outreach and cold emails in a world where it's totally unnecessary to ever send a cold email. Why not start the conversation, help them in some way, include them in your content, and then remind them that you're open to being included in their content. This is really the key to making that connection between the relationships, the links, the authority, the content, the rankings, the qualified visitors, and the lead generation. That is a much better way to approach influencer marketing, in my experience. Make stuff with people. Find interesting people who create things and work together with them uh, to make content, better content, better connections, better relationships. The benefits are much more durable for your brand. Again, this is Andy from Orbit Media. We hope you found this useful. Uh, we'll keep making these. If you know anyone who would find this helpful, feel free to share. We'd be grateful.